Ever wondered if the world around us is just a mind-bending illusion? With the technology explosion in AI and computational neuroscience, this reality seems closer than ever. Imagine a future where we can actually tweak our own reality using cutting-edge brain science. But what kind of neuroscience would we actually need to develop to make this happen? Brainwashing, neurosimulation, and neural interfaces. These are actually technologies that are being developed right now. But how far are we? In sci-fi movies and books, technologies are taken to the extreme creating different dystopian futures. And although some of them are quite far off, some of them have been spot on. And what these movies do is that they push our imagination to the limits of our beliefs. So in this video series, I want to deep dive into different movies that actually use neuroscience that I believe could become reality in the future. So the first movie I want to talk about is The Matrix. This is a cult classic. And if you haven't watched it, watch it right now because I will give quite quite some spoilers. In this dystopian future, humanity finds itself trapped within the confines of a simulated reality known as the Matrix. Crafted by sentient machines, it serves as a distraction from the grim truth. Humans are being used as an energy source. Our protagonist, a computer programmer named Thomas Anderson, alias Neo, uncovers the shocking reality of the Matrix. He teams up with a group of rebels determined to overthrow the machines and free humanity from their control. So neuroscience actually takes the center stage in The Matrix. The film revolves around the idea that our perception is being controlled by The Matrix and that The Matrix has a direct control over our brains and shows us different versions of reality. So in The Matrix, the machines use electrical impulses to stimulate the brains of humans in The Matrix. And this is actually a concept called neuromodulation or neurostimulation. So neuromodulation is a concept at the heart of the matrix. The machines use direct electrical impulses to stimulate the brains of humans, creating vivid sensory experiences. And this idea has actually been popularized in philosophy primarily, and that's the concept of the brain in a vat. So imagine that you are a brain suspended in a vat of nutrient-rich fluid with electrodes attached to your brain to stimulate sensory experiences. The electrodes are connected to a computer that can create and manipulate virtual reality environments which are fed directly into your brain. In this scenario your brain would perceive the virtual reality as if it is real and you would have no way of knowing that your experience were not actually happening in the physical world. Now this definitely raises some interesting philosophical questions about the nature of reality and if we can believe that anything around us is real but what I actually want to think about is if this could actually happen if we take the laws of physics to be real right now in our lives. So instead of creating the whole world, let's tackle this problem step by step. So the first step would be to create one experience that's not out there in the world by direct stimulation of our brain. And actually this is right now possible. So one example of a technology that uses stimulation of the brain directly to give rise to some kind of sensory experience is a visual prosthetic. So a visual prosthetic involves using electrical stimulation to activate the visual cortex in the brain, which is in the back, uh, for people usually who are blind and creating the perception of visual images that are not necessarily there. So the visual prosthetic consists of two parts, an external camera and a tiny implant that is surgically placed or on the retina, for example, or directly on the visual area of the brain. And using this, we can actually restore the sight of some blind people to a certain degree. It's still not perfect, but this is just one sense, right? So could we actually then also create the experience of a whole world being around us. And this is definitely more speculative of what is possible right now. So one major concept that is being embraced right now in neuroscience is the idea of embodied cognition. So cognition is embodied when it is deeply dependent upon features of the physical body of an agent. That is when aspects of the agent's body beyond the brain play a significant causal or physically constitutive role in cognitive processing. So in general right now in neuroscience it is believed that we cannot really detach the brain from the body 
because they have both co-evolved over time to work in tandem in such specific ways that if we detach the brain from the body, we would basically need to build a new a similar body to give rise to the same experiences. But if you have a different opinion, please let me know down below because it's still debated also amongst neuroscientists if this could be possible. So in the Matrix, they also use a neural interface. In the movie, the characters can enter the Matrix by plugging themselves into a neural interface that directly connects their brains to the simulated reality. So this interface is essentially a brain computer interface. Maybe you have heard of it, these BCIs. And BCIs at the moment are actually quite commonly used. So I'll show some examples here. But one example that I personally really like is that in November of 2011, this Japanese company developed this neuroware, created a pair of supposedly mind-reading plush cat ears and they were called Neko Mimi um, and they would react to the wearer's emotional states and then that could be shown to the world and it's actually really fun if you look at videos of people wearing these cat ears and I do have to say of course these are not very accurate they're based on EG but the link between EG signals and emotions is quite weak and it's really hard to from a very broad EG signal get a very specific thought pattern for example. But what could happen in the future is that right now EEG is on the top of the skull, but you could also open up the skull and put the BCI directly onto the brain. And this is, for example, being developed by companies such as Neuralink, but also in the university it's already used with epileptic patients. And this has definitely more potential because the signal of the brain isn't washed out by the skull. So the last concept in the movie is the idea of brainwashing and the brainwashing aspect in the matrix is a little bit more under the surface and it lies in the manipulation of human perception and the suppression of their awareness of reality. The machines control the information fed to individuals within the simulation, shaping their beliefs, memories and experiences. So in general I find the idea of brainwashing really interesting. I think right now it's a little bit out of fashion this term but it was popularized in the 1950s by an American journalist named Edward hunter and he used this term brainwashing to describe a new form of psychological intervention that he claims was being perfected by certain enemy states and hunter argued that this conglomeration of ideology, technology, medicine and psychological sciences could be used to launch an onslaught on people's mind. So these are very specific words, but I want to dive into the idea if neuroscience could actually be used to brainwash people. So one of the most basic ideas of brainwashing is this suppression of memories and certain feelings. So the first thing that we would want to do if we want to suppress a specific memory is locate where this memory is located in the brain. But if you know a little bit about neuroscience, you actually know that memories aren't located in a specific part of our brain. They're actually distributed over different areas and networks in the brain. The formation, storage and retrieval of memories involve different brain regions working together. Two main areas in memory processing that are quite known are the hippocampus and the cerebral cortex. And you could of course think maybe I could just destroy these regions and then I would um, automatically suppress the memory formation of people and that is true you would suppress the memory information of people but they would also basically not be able to function in the world anymore so I think this is a little bit too extreme but something that has been done in animals actually which I find quite interesting and it's still unknown if this is possible with humans but that is the suppression or manipulation of memories through optogenetics so for example two recent studies have shown that it is possible to weaken or even erase memories associated with drug drug use in rats which reduces their drug seeking behavior when recovering addicts see things like drug related items or reminders of drug use can trigger a strong craving and make them more likely to repress 
press. And these studies aim to disrupt this process of memory reconsolidation, which is our ability of our brains to strengthen and store memories when we recall them. But this is usually done only during the reconsolidation process. And it isn't really clear if after this reconsolidation has been done, which is a way more distributed process, if we can then still alter these memory states by a very specific neuroscience technology. I would actually also love your opinion if you think any of these technologies could be brought even further than where they are now and if a reality such as created by the matrix could become a true reality that we would be living in. Also if you have any movies or books that you love that touch upon the concept of neuroscience in sci-fi I would love to read or watch them so put them down in the comments below and if you could choose the blue or the red pill which one would you pick? I think I know my answer.